I hope they wash their feet before they let him do that. And I also want to add, we're in Jesus days. So there ain't boots, there ain't socks. Right. There's your funky ass feet and a sandal. Feet. Sand, Ugh. hammer time. Ugh. They didn't have like the stuff. There's no pedicures or anything horses in Jesus day. Animals everywhere. Stink horses, walking into poop. I mean, shit was wild. <laughs> and our Literally. Messiah is like, let me wash your funky ass feet. Yeah. Welcome to the Lion's Den, episode 42. My name is Eddie. I'm um, Brad. And I'm Alex. Wow, that was like very excitable. Well, everybody was a little down, so I just picked <laughs> it up a little bit. So we kind of started last week. We're into the uh, the days of Lent. So staying in that theme, um, today we're going to talk a little bit about, and we'll kind of get into why. This is uh, John 13, 1 to 5. It was just so, just to kind of set up the, so this is the Last Supper. So this is the night of where Jesus knows that things are about to get real, real. Mm -hmm. um, it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave the world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Um, so that always kind of blew my mind. So he knows he's about to go through some shit. It's the last meal and he's washing fetuses. So I like all you guys. I'm not washing none of your freaking feet. No. Um, no. Right. Buddy, I drive to McDonald's to use the washroom. Mm -hmm. I know you ain't washing my feet. <laughs> <laughs> so I rest my case. I love my wife. I love my mother. Um, I mean, if they're very sickly and I mean, they just can't do it. I, there's 50 50 chance I'll wash their feet. We'll get mm -hmm. you a spray bottle or something. Yeah. Something, a hose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I might like suds them up. Um, one feet are gross. Your dog is giving you the look right now, just so you know. That's because she loves me. Well, would you wash her feet? Yeah. Okay. Because she can't. <laughs> Fair enough. But, like, if you're able to, wash your own damn feet. And it always kind of... And Judas is in this. Mm -hmm. And Jesus knows what's about to go down. Right. And he still washes his punk ass feet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it just, the humility in it blows my mind i go to i know we talked about this before i go to latin mass so in easter they actually do it you know the priest does it too. and even watching the priest do it i'm like gives you the heebie yeah. Mm. yeah i hope they wash their feet before they let him do that and i also want to add we're in jesus days so there ain't boots there ain't socks right. there's your funky ass feet and a sandal feet. sand Ugh. Hammer time. Ugh. They didn't have like the stuff. There's no pedicures or anything horses in Jesus' and day. Animals everywhere. Stank horses walking into poop. I mean, shit was wild. <laughs> and our literally Messiah is like, let me wash your funky ass feet. Yeah. So obviously it's about humility, but you know, kind of what I want to talk about today is why did he do that, and why of all nights did he do that that night. Well, it's humility, and you know, I wrote down here the the symbolic like of it being vulnerability. So, I mean, the I think it's it's extremely uh, extremely powerful that in that he talks about taking and stripping his 
under layer and covering himself in a towel. So, I mean, a lot of times in the Bible, they use being naked for being symbolic, for being vulnerable. And this is a point where, you know, Jesus knows what Judas is going to do. I mean, he says it to him as he's washing his feet, you know. Um, and I think it just goes to show that in order to be and show humility, you have to be vulnerable. You have to be willing to have things happen to you that aren't necessarily a positive and go into it with the right mindset. I would agree. I, I, it's an interesting. It's interesting to kind of look at it because, like you said, he knows what's about to happen, but still is able to kind of be like, "I need to do this." And it would be like the shock. Like if we came down here and you were like, "Brad, Alex, I'm going to wash your feet," like we would be shocked. So uh, do you three think of they, us would be, you know. <laughs> so I can tell you, G, if I if you come down and I ask to wash your feet, I'm something something's about right, to go down. Right, yeah. So you might know something. Or, I yeah. Got it. Aliens are real. And he's been abducted for sure. Yeah. Something's off. But do you think the disciples were like, oh, like, you think they understood the magnitude of that gesture? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, if you read further on into that, you know, that particular spot with John, um, you know, a couple of them kind of fight it. Mm. You know, they're like, you're not washing my feet. You're the son of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he's, I'm washing your feet. Yeah, I guess this, you don't argue with this. Kind of yeah, right. Like like, well, you right. know, I mean, you're not like, uh, I mean, they, they tried. I like a good pedicure. Go um, if, well, I, if I remember right, I think Peter, you know, raised a pretty big stink mm -hmm. about it. But, um, you know, I, I think when we read, one of the podcasts we we're going to have is, why should I care about the Bible? What does it have to do with me? You know, mm -hmm. if, if I don't want to be religious, I don't want to follow Christianity, why should I have any impact on my life? Um, and it's, you know, especially, and it's not to make less of anything of the rest of the Bible, but especially the Gospels are, you know, the story of Jesus' life. And there's a lot of really heavy things. I mean, it's filled with stuff like this, but, you know, and anybody that reads it's going to take different things from different parts of it, but... You know, I think for me, because it's just such out of my realm, mm -hmm. Every when I saw it, you know, we started going to that church about four years ago, and I was like, oh, is he really gonna about to wash their feet? And even watching it is very humbling. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like a lot of humility, because I'm just not that guy. Right. Um, there's nothing about me that... Washes feet? Washes feet. Yeah. Or has anywhere near that kind of humility. You know, I'm the one that, you know, wants to be like, don't wash that guy's feet. Who the hell is he? Right. You know, everything. My idea of strength is always self-empowerment. Um, nobody's, I'm no better than anybody. Nobody's any better than me. So who the hell are you? I'm going to wash your punk ass feet. feet. Well, that's mm -hmm. the whole point of the story, I think. I mean, especially revolved around the fact that Jesus knew that he was going to be betrayed. And I think that's the whole point of the story. Well, and I mean, I can, I can definitely be projecting that story is to me that you ain't shit. I'm Jesus and, right. and I'm willing to do it. So who the hell do you think you are? So that's exactly what I'm saying is I think that's the whole point of the story because Jesus didn't find out he was going to be betrayed as he knelt down to wash the feet. Oh, no, you know, that's my point. So, I mean, it was without fail. And of course, because understanding Jesus and understanding God and understanding our last podcast of unconditional love, it didn't come from a place of a human motive where we would have been like, I'm going to do this to prove a point because I know you're going to betray me. And that's the power of it in the Bible. And I think that's where the strength of the vulnerability comes in is because Jesus did it. And yes, as a human, we would have used that opportunity, I think, to prove a point that look at me, look at how I lead. I'm willing to do this knowing I'm going to be crucified for it. Where Jesus, that never crossed his mind. I think it was coming out of a place of love to teach a lesson that regardless of what other people put you through, the right thing is the right thing. And you're never above doing anything. And the people that lead from the top, I think Jesus showed that I'm a leader that leads from the front. You know, I don't, I use the term with my sales team all the time that my sales team can tell you that I don't do things that I, I wouldn't ask them to do. My sales team's never been asked to do anything that I haven't done in front of each one of them. Mm -hmm. And my point is, I think that's the lesson that Jesus is teaching us is 
this is how you are a good human. This is how you are a soldier of Christ to show compassion. And he does it by leading by example, showing people that even through times where people are out to get you, you still need to lead with compassion. You still need to lead with love. And I definitely agree with all that. Um, to this point, though, he's like healed blind people, made cripples walk, fed thousands. So how powerful is it to show something so minute of washing somebody's feet? I've turned water into wine. I've healed blind people, and I'm still willing to wash the feet. So I think, and again, maybe because it's so gross to me, Yeah. I don't think it's that minute. I think it's huge. Fair. I, I think that the fact that... Yeah, they're not Manny and Petty. Teams. There's yeah. a lot of stuff he could have been doing. That's true. He could have kept talking. I mean... There's a lot of things he can teach. Why is it washing feet? Mm -hmm. Why is it he had to wash his feet? It, and again, I think there's it's, there's a lot of humility in that. Yeah, it's no the, doubt. It's the highest power doing the the most yes. god awful task. I mean, you know? that's how I take it. I mean, maybe somebody doesn't see it that way, and I and I get it. But that's definitely how I take it. Well, and yeah. I think we're all kind of proving the same point of the simplistic act of washing feet. And and you're saying it's not simplistic because those are stank ass feet. I get it. It's not even about being stinky or any of that. It's just he's the son of God. One hundred percent. So I ain't washing your punk ass feet. But I think he knows that message, right? No doubt about it. And that's the point is I'm Jesus Christ, I'm the son of God. I have the ability to turn water to wine. I have the ability, but I also have the ability to show compassion to a level to wash the feet of those who serve me. And I, and think, I think that's, that's the message right. of these people have been walking through stank ass ground. There aren't, there's no world of manicure, pedicure, like we said before. Mm -hmm. It's Jesus showing that if you follow me, if you believe in me, I'm going to take care of you, and it's washing the feet of those who serve him. And I think so. That's the even it's more than that because they don't. So Jesus, Judas is selling them out without a doubt. So if you believe in me or not, I'm washing your feet. Fair, yeah. Fair. You're about to get and me murdered, how do you think and I'm washing your feet. It's a good point. Knowing that he's about to get sold out, and here he is doing the utmost humble, humiliating thing, mm -hmm. and nobody's like, ah. Oh, Damn, you know, like it, it's it really it's it's funny because it is it at first read it's a simple it's for sure, simple, but yeah. you know, but then you start diving in and you're like, oh wait, wait a second. No, I agree. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. why because we we're talking about humility. That's why I specifically yeah. picked up want to read that part of it because yeah. I mean, there's mm -hmm. thousands and thousands of things that Jesus did that showed great mm -hmm. humility. Right. You know, it's just one the act of it. M more so the timing of it. Um, I think the timing is the big thing. And really. I agree. Yeah. I completely agree. No doubt. You know, if that's, you know, three chapters in at the beginning, then you're like, oh, okay, that's yeah. super impressive. Nice of them. But this is the thing that he, this is like one of his last acts, you know, before yeah. everything goes down. So, you know, I think, you know, if somebody's on death row, what do they get? Last meal. Last meal. And then what else do they get? Final opportunity to say something. Mm -hmm. Right. Right? So, like, you know before death, you get these two things, like these two wishes, and then your last chance to, like, make your voice heard. And kind of in his final meal was, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Which is just insanely powerful. And again, for me, unbelievably humbling because I would just never do it. Right. Yeah. And I think he. And it makes me feel like an ass because I would never do it. I and mean, he did it. I would name drop. You guys know who my dad is? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I'm not washing your feet. <laughs> I got past the bread. I'm hungry. You know? Yeah. Well, and they show it again. I mean, one of my favorite. My favorite quotes, one of my favorite scenes from the Bible, if you will, is when Jesus is being crucified and people are heckling, people are saying all this. And mm -hmm. what does he say? Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. So, holy shit. So, I know I'm going to get crucified. I'm in the act of being crucified in the humility, the love, the compassion. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Mm -hmm. And the lesson that teaches you in life and how you should live your life mm -hmm. in your daily interactions. We talk about it all the time on how people interact with each other, putting expectations on love. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. 
how powerful is that to go through every single day of your life being wrong? They have no idea what they're doing. Mm-hmm. No, and, and like I said, why why is the Bible important? It's because of these type of teachings. And, you know, unfortunately, it's been bastardized more than probably any book that's ever been in existence. You know, it doesn't, there's a lot of ways to go at the Bible. Um, one is historical. Another one is there's this guy, Jesus, and this is our best history of him. Another one is Word of God. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, there's a lot of different ways to, to read the Bible. Yeah. Um, but there's stories like this that are, you know, we have to remember who's writing it and when. Right. So these aren't like, you know, anybody with any weight in society that's writing this stuff. You know, so we think of if we're trying to, because a lot of people will you know, Jesus' myth gained power, religion became this, this, and this, all these things. And when you really think about it, we were actually talking about it a little bit before this, um, because we were talking about, you know, when the stone was moved, it was in the Bible, it's women that discovered it. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to revert back to that period of time where women had no say about anything, they had no voice in anything, so if you're trying to create a religion that's going to have tons of power and win people over, that's not meaning I made this shit up. So I'm yeah. deciding to write the Bible today and right. I'm going to come up with this new thing. None of these are the route you go. No. You don't want that guy washing their feet. No. You don't want women discovering them because right away it's going to be discounted that, oh, they're women whatever silly shit was thought at the time. Well, and even the, the, the time period, just, you know, like it's not, it's not like Oprah, you get a car, you get a car, you know, they had no cars, you know? So this is, this is essentially to some degree, the, the largest gesture that he could probably do that was also extremely demeaning to some degree, you know, without a doubt. I mean, Jesus was killed for being Jesus. Right. (laughs) And and like I said, I don't think he, I, what amazes me about is I don't think he saw it being demeaning whatsoever. No, no. I think he saw it as an act of love an act of, Mm -hmm. and there's an obvious message of, I'm not going to be here any longer. Mm -hmm. You guys are the ones that have been with me. This is my message. Mm -hmm. So make no mistake about it. If I can do this, any one of you guys can. So don't ever think you're anything more than what you are. Right, which goes back to kind of what you were saying. You know, I think it's it's a yeah. very, very clear message. Mm-hmm. And when we talk about it, you know, especially with Lions Den, we talk about it a lot, how much that's been bastardized mm-hmm. throughout the years. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, we see it constantly that, you know, those are the, when I hear a lot of the stuff, um, you know, when it comes to somebody not wanting to believe in something, I completely understand. Totally get it. You know, there's um, a virgin birth. There's a son of God. So you now you have twofold. Now you got to believe in something you can't see and in the son of something you can't see. Mm-hmm. And then he does all these miraculous things. And then he gets whipped and then he dies like it's there's a lot of a lot of faith that goes into that. Um, what I say is remove that. So there are some hard, concrete things that we know. We know there was a man that lived at the time named Jesus. Um, we know he died on a cross. Now, virgin births, son of God, all that stuff, you know, outside the Bible. And, you know, and I do think we talked about a little bit before, there's a lot of other text. We, when we look at the Bible now, we look at it as... You know, like Stephen King sat down and typed the shit out. That's not the reality of it. You know, the Bible is a conglomeration of scripts that had been around for quite a while that they put all together. You know, different authors, different people or different parts of it. Mini library in itself. Exactly, exactly. You know, and I think a lot of people don't understand it. They kind of think somebody just sat down and... Hey, what's some cool shit that I could put down? And mm-hmm. I've never thought about that. Like, I'm in a mind blow right now, and I know it seems silly because 
I've never looked at the Bible because you hear all the time from everybody who's against the Bible, against Jesus Christ, against God. It's a sales pitch. Mm -hmm. So any sales pitch that I've ever seen is filled with value. And as you made those comments, I'm looking at it and you're right. Every story in the Bible. So if I'm writing a fake, if I'm writing the Bible as a lie, why am I telling the story as human beings, the people in which I'm trying to sell that our first act on this world was a failure? So, by the way, I'm trying to sell you on this religion. Just so you all know, the first thing you guys ever did, you screwed up. You ate the apple. Way to go. None of the Bible is selling us on why human race has been great and that Jesus Christ was this Hercules walking around with a sword and conquering worlds. It was, he was a humbled man that was frowned upon by everybody and time and time again was shown that he was completely wrong and all he did was show love. So the Bible's not even set up to sell Jesus sell Jesus is a great person, absolutely, but to sell human or Christianity, I mean, it shows, it does a good job of showing where we failed. And I've never thought about that. And I guess why it resonates with me so much is so many people put out there on why the Bible is fake and why it is bullshit. Mm -hmm. But why did we show all this vulnerability? Why did the tales tell of Jesus being well, vulnerable? Because we're seeing it, you know, 2,000 years and something later where we see it built. We see the, you know, we talk about it a lot with, you know, a lot of different organizations, a lot of right. different things where you see all the success that it is now, the Golden Rooms, the Vatican right. and all these things. And you forget that at that time they were nothing. Well, the Bible's the middle. So, yeah, uh, Catholicism doesn't realize what it just clicked well, for me. Well, so the reality is there is no Christianity, there's no Catholicism, there's none of that stuff. Right. It's just guys telling a story of this person they met, what they learned. Well, and that's my point. Point being, if we were Marvel yeah. and we're writing a superhero story, yep. he's kind of anticlimactic. Yeah. He gets murdered yeah. in the end. Yeah. He has all the ability. Spoiler alert. By the way. <laughs> yeah. He, really he has <laughs> all the ability. He's the son of God. Right. Who's Thor. Yeah. So, I. oh, you don't watch Marvel, do you? No, yeah. That's it's like really Superman talking. being, and I know it's not Marvel, but that's like Superman being uh, uh, like just, an accountant. <laughs> well, worse. Yeah. It's Supposed Superman. Mild-mannered reporter. Getting his ass <laughs> kicked. Yeah, like mm -hmm. uh, he's not even at the desk. He's right. out there reporting just, a snowfall. Right. I mean, it's Superman yeah. getting his ass kicked. Right. Yeah. I mean, constantly. Thor is the son of a god yeah. in the Marvel. And he kicks everybody's ass. I, he kicks everybody's mm -hmm. ass. He's only fat for a little bit. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's ass kicking extraordinaire. Yep. Why? Yeah. Because that's what sells. That's power. That's what draws people in. That's what's exciting. You want to see the evil being whipped. You want to see the bad guys lose. You want to see all of those things. None of that happens in this story. No. It's, no polar opposite that's why a lot when people are very quick to shoot it down you know forget everything that kind of surrounds it the religion you know rome all this different stuff or other i mean it's not just roman catholics but all of the stuff that we kind of tag with it and just read the story like you would any other story and it starts to resonate with the fact of yeah, if I was building like a superhero, I don't know if this is going to sell. Right. And it did. And it's sold by the least domination that's out there. I mean, these were, you know, Jewish people that wrote this, Jewish people that were distributing it that didn't have great standing at that time. Right. Right. You know, it's not like it was the Romans that came up with this. And then, in fact, you know, they're countering what the Romans they had several guys. They had several people that right. they lived with. Um, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. You know, I just, there's just such a clear message in the act. And it's something I think about all the time. You know, we've all been there. You're driving down the road. Somebody, Alex, this never happens to because he never gets Rose Rage. Ever. Only every 15 freaking minutes. Most patient man you'll ever meet, especially on the road. And, you know, we get so hyped up. We want to freaking hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. And then here's our savior that's like, 
you know what? I'm going to wash the guy's feet. You know what, buddy? Pull over. I got a tub in the back. <laughs> yes, let me soap. wash your Let's feet. Take, yeah. your, take it's, your shoes off. It's extremely humbling. Well, and even to the point that you made, so the people that are distributing the Bible were who? Jewish. Right. So even for Jesus, Jesus was killed, not because he was loved. So he was killed because people didn't believe him. They thought he was causing waves. So newsflash... Catholicism, Jesus Christ, like you said, that really wasn't necessarily a thing at the time, mm-hmm. but still. So the people distributing the Bible weren't liked. Well, a Bible didn't even exist. It was just stories. Each one of these little stories, somebody had this one, yep. somebody had that one. Yep. And, and as you're distributing it, that. it's like going to an author that nobody wants to read. Nobody wants to read your stuff. Nobody wants to look at it. Mm-hmm. And they're still distributing it. So to your point, if it was something that was being made up, don't you think at some point somebody would have had somebody who had some poll kind of do it or write it about something that people wanted to hear about? And I think that's the power of it is people recognizing that nobody wanted this. Nobody mm-hmm. wanted a majority of people didn't want Jesus. That's why he was crucified. And we still put it out. It was still put out there. And the power that that carries, the message that that sends. Well, and like I said, just the thought process of you know, Jesus was on earth for over 30 years. These are the things that they decided to share, Mm -hmm. you know, whoever was around and taking the notes and all that stuff at that time that they thought that this was super important to include, you know, and again, I think it's, it's a very clear message of having humility, having that unconditional love. And, you know, again, uh, that's my dude. I'm a Jesus freak, you know, all my heart. I, I can't do it. So that's not my ask. My ask is, okay, if, if Jesus washes feet, can we get 5% where we don't want to choke somebody out because they cut us off in traffic, Alex? <laughs> we just got done talking I, about that wasn't I, me. No, it was a lie. <laughs> it was a strip to the truth. And how much different does the world look if, you know, we're just able to capture part of that? And a lot of it is really, you know, stems from having that humility. Humility is understanding that everybody's living a life. Nobody's life is easy. Who am I to think better that I'm better than anybody else or disregard someone else's struggles, pain, things that they're going through? You know, humility kind of ties in with, you know, empathy, compassion, sure. to be able to not be so aggressive or thinking you're better or yeah. higher up than somebody else. Vulnerability. Vulnerability. You know, Alex said. Uh, you know, which isn't an easy thing. No. And we're at a point, you know, especially in this country where humility is non-existent. Mm, yep. Everybody is the best at everything. Everybody has the most important thing to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just not existent. Why do you think that is? I mean, that's just kind of what the thought that I was just kind of processing. Why is humility such a turnoff to people? Why is it such a hard thing to do? Um, because it's looked at as weakness. Yep. Right. Like misery enjoys company. We've talked about it a thousand times. So why is it that humility seems to exile absolutely everybody? Because it's, it's hard. Yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, again, when I think about it in my head, it like I was like, it, it blows my mind. Yeah, but like it's so, I guess the effort it takes to be and to show humility, I guess, is hard for sure. But like being miserable sucks. And it's not hard to be miserable, but it's hard to live miserable. No doubt about it. And it's like, I, I guess I don't understand why that's such a big shift for people. So I actually thought about that before, you know, we kind of, when I was going through things that to talk about, I mean, I've been looking at this for weeks. Yeah. And, you know, I really, because again, every time I read it, I shiver. I was like, oh, really? Because um, I just think of doing it myself and mm-hmm. how much I wouldn't. And I was like, why does this, why is this cut to the core of you so much? And again, it's the act, it's the timing of it. And, and I really think humility is difficult because um, everything's so confrontational that you don't want anybody to get over on you, mm. you know? So by being humble, so perfect example, we we're both in, you're driving again, not that this ever happens with Alex mm. and 
this guy wants to go and your it's, mother's going to yell at me. It's and I your turn. Anything. Well, at least you didn't use any bad sure. words. Sure. Any, so, any bad words, yeah. I didn't say the F word. But no. you both come to the stop sign and it's really your turn, but they go. Mm-hmm. The thought process is who the hell does this guy think he is? Why is he trying to get in front of me? Right. And who do you think you are to get in front of me? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's it in a nutshell. Yeah. That's why it bothers you so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or me or any of us. I mean, we're all guilty of it, just not every 15 minutes like Alex. It doesn't bother Alex. Yeah. But it bothers us. Right. It's right. right. yeah. um, a lot easier to pick on Alex. <laughs> humility is maybe the guy's on a rush. Maybe the guy's in a rush. Maybe he didn't notice. Maybe, maybe he's, he's going to, wife's pregnant. He's on the way to the hospital. Who knows? Yep. I mean, those are all things that we never consider because. I mean, especially with us at the table, we kind of champion that. So this guy's doing this to everybody. I'm not going to be the guy who's going to get away with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're going to so learn some manners. I'm, right. You're going to learn from me that you're not going to take advantage of people that are kind 100%. or nice or whatever, which is super. It was exactly what got Jesus killed. Right. So that hypocrisy of being that, righteous dude that's going to stick up for the people that can't, you know, that's what Caphasus was doing in killing Jesus. Yes. You know, and Pontius Pilate was a little more kind of covering his own ass with it, but it really comes to Pontius Pilate went or went with it because if not, there was going to be an uprising from the Jews. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now he has another riot. There were already problems there. Now he's got to answer for that. Possibly be booted out. Possibly be killed himself. Um, but it always comes from that righteous point that I'm going to be the one that people are going to learn from. What I think is important with Jesus is he definitely had those moments. There are mm-hmm. many moments like that. There are plenty of times where... He stood up. He let people know. The thing with him is it's never with anger. Right. It's never with malice. It's never screaming at anybody. <laughs> now, again, we're reading it, so who knows? I mean, maybe he did, but it never reads that way. Um, it's him just stating facts, stating reality, and then mm-hmm. constant mic drops from him. Mm-hmm. And the reality is that's more effective than anything. We know that. We've all seen it in action. You know, um, it's just, why is it so hard to do? You know, why is it so hard to take that mentality? I, uh, I, about two years ago now, I actually had to leave a job to kind of reopen my company. And I was not, was not in a good place at that job. It was not a good fit. It was, it was not good. And I had to quit. And uh, exactly always see eye to eye with the owner and in quitting I took the high road I could have been like you did this and this and this right. and all these things that were and I, I was like I'm gonna, I'm gonna show humility and, I'm gonna say, and it was one of the most difficult things to do because I knew basically it was like, not you it's me kind of deal mm-hmm. um, and it still bothers me to this day where I should have been like you know what that was my chance to just but at the time I was like no this is the right this is the right way to do this. Mm -hmm. It's the more peaceful way. And it's hard, you know, to get back to like, that's the difficult thing with, you know, because we all do want to be that superhero and take down whatever, or punish the, punish somebody for doing wrong. Punish is the key word to it. It, And, you know, and it's hard to be like, nope, I'm just going to take, I'm going to be humble and take the high road. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Um, and it could be, you know, it's just an example for me, but it could be even in a breakup or a relationship or whatever, you know, we talk about communication all the time. And, uh, this is a form of communication and understanding, you know what, I need to be humble and be aware of the people that are around me, their feelings and their, you know, right. You know, how, how they're going to take this conversation. And to Alex's point, you never feel better after it. No. So I... I mean, it was never Alex, but I've talked to people when they had road rage and just happened to be on the phone while they were cursing them out, giving them the finger, pulling off to the side. Stopping in the middle of an intersection. Stopping in the middle of the intersection. Guy sounds like a real jag. Yeah. Doing all these things. Rolling the window down, throwing bottles. Right. And it takes this. Alex does. Come on. It takes this person (laughs) at least. 25, 30 minutes to come down off it. Mm-hmm. It's like they did all that and now it's gone and they feel better. 
And I think that's the thing with that is, you know, you're tied into it. Now you can't let it go. Now you're pissed off. Uh, I mean, I'm not trying to teach Alex a lot. So on any just of like at least in interventions, they at least get to say, hi, my name's at Alex. And everybody goes, hi, Alex. Like I could have gotten a warning before I said that. Yeah, I mean, it just yeah. happened to come up. Mm, but just, yeah. uh, and, and like I said, I'm natural conversation for just as guilty. Not so much with the road rage every five, ten minutes like, like Alex, Alex. is. Yeah. Um, but I definitely have my things that hit a nerve, you yeah. know. But here's in that instance where humility comes in, you're at a stop sign. Mm -hmm. The guy goes, it's not his turn. Yeah. And you're on one. Yeah. And you get right behind him and he waves. Sorry, man. My bad. I'm good. You know, that's humility in the other guy. I fucked up. Like, like, sorry. You yeah. know, and you're all and you're like, oh, shit. Well, now I really feel like an ass because I was all, and he real, you know. I, that has happened to me. Yes. Yeah. And I've felt exactly that way. Yeah. I've been feeling an ass. And that's. It's the power of humility. Kind of the whole point with it is you just, you can't lose by doing it. We know it. Right. We've all experienced it. We've all, you know, have been there. You know, why is it still so freaking hard to do? And what it really comes down to is our dumbass ego. You wow, know, that, that yeah. devil inside us, mm -hmm. you know, and what I find fascinating is studying Eastern and Western philosophy is Eastern talks about ego constantly. We really don't view that with Western, like Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism is constantly just get rid of the ego, get rid of the ego. You really don't hear that a lot in Western. Right. But what you do have is tons of acts that's just destroying your ego. I mean, that's Jesus, son of God, washing feet. There's nothing more humbling than that, right. which is the destruction of ego. So it, it's teaching the same thing in a much different way. What I find amazing about it is we don't ever see that in there. You no. know, we don't ever look at that as death of ego because we're Western philosophy and, you know, we don't want to talk about the bad word ego. I find it amazing. Yeah, I, I think for me, self-satisfaction is, is what you get at the lack of humility. So I think a lot of the reason people aren't, they don't show that that humility is because there's no self-satisfaction to it. So like take the, I, I'm going to use a different example of a road rage because I'm tired of getting picked on. So we're going <laughs> to, we're going to pick something else. But you know, when you choose to not show humility, it's because whatever that action is, is it's a bully. You're at a bar and some dude's picking on a dude because you know he can't take it. You mm -hmm. step in, you break the dude's nose, there's self-satisfaction. I taught that bully a lesson. I know unequivocally for me, that was it. So been in a lot of fights in my life, newsflash, very few of them have been when I'm out of control, meaning under the influence of anything. For me, it's always been a conscious decision of exactly what you said. This dude's been going on his entire life because nobody's told him you can't do this. I'm not the one. You use it all the time. You're going to mm -hmm. learn a lesson today. So using that as an example, it's there's a self-satisfaction with that. There's self-gratification. I taught a lesson. I did this. When you let it go, there's supposed to be self-satisfaction, that you took the higher road. And I think with humility, we're so conditioned because in Western civilization, we don't talk about that ego. Your ego is viewed as what defines you a lot of the time. So if you're allowing that to go away, you're losing that self-gratification. And a lot of times that's what we're looking for. And that's where the devil comes in because with Jesus, humility, washing the feet, that's out of compassion. Mm -hmm. Me teaching somebody a lesson because you're picking on a guy that can't stand up for himself. So unless it just got left out of the Bible, I missed the part where Jesus broke somebody's nose. Oh, uh, yeah, it's not in there. And that's where <laughs> human error comes in. That's the devil. So Jesus has shown us time and time again how to handle situations, how to be a soldier for Christ. Mm -hmm. It's not by being violent. That's the devil. And I think that's human interaction. So we have a podcast about faith, talking about how Jesus has changed all of our lives. I've done countless things that I'm extremely not proud of. I've caused physical harm to people that I did because I had to prove to them whatever I thought they needed. Felt terrible about it. But I know that. And I know I'm imperfect. And that's what's great about God is we talked about it with love having expectation. God knows that... In those situations, in that instance, I have that guilt. I have that remorse. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what 
Jesus, that's what God, that's what Christianity, Catholicism, that's what that's looking for, is showing the remorse, understanding the difference between right and wrong. Because the reality is, if we made every decision correct, this conversation would never have to happen. So I believe in God. No, for I sure. am a believer. I know unequivocally that there is a God. I guess for me, those instances of road rage, those instances of me being younger, that's human flaw. Those are things that I'm flawed at, that I need to work on. And I think for me, I'm not okay with it, but I'm better with it because I know my God loves me. I know God loves me the way that I am. And I know it's something I have to work on. And that's what's great about this is you just got to work on it, you Mm -hmm. know, and showing humility is understanding that there's an issue there. And just because you don't always act on it the right way, the humility in that is understanding that there's still room for growth, you know, and that self-satisfaction isn't the path to righteousness. It's humility. It's compassion. Mm -hmm. Humility is putting your ego in check. You know, um, learning that, understanding that, it's not easy. Like I said, even in my example, like there's still days that go by that it bothers me that I, I was humble in, in times of my life because that ego is driven, you know, mm-hmm. is, you know, you do want to teach that lesson. You do want to inflict some sort of pain because usually, you know, like in my case, your case, like somebody's inflicted pain, you want to kind of get back on that. But humility is being able to put that ego in check and being like, I am going to be the bigger person. This is the the better route to take. Yep. Uh, this is the route Jesus would have taken, you know. So on. But I guess, so, I mean, the thing I really want people to, to think about is why do we think the other doesn't work? Or when did that become normal to not try it? Well, we know, you know... I just think kind of what we were just talking about is just kind of human nature that we don't want to be taken advantage of. And, you know, then you add righteousness to human nature and you get violence, you get all these things. But, you know, here we are and we're a small thing of millions and millions and millions of people still talking about this dude, Jesus, so many years later. That shit's effective. I mean, there's kind of a really quite a few religions based off it. Uh, There's millions, might be billions, probably billions of Christians out there based off of, you know, this person's actions. We have people like Martin Luther King where changed the world. Yep. Um, Was all nonviolence, constant. I mean, that's another one that, I mean, and that's different. I've seen videos of that shit Mm -hmm. of, you know, him being beaten and called names and, him never reacting that way. We know Gandhi, I mean, the list goes on and on and on of people who have acted that way that had really significant impact in the world. Whereas we look at the other and they just don't. They don't change anything. No. Nothing Nothing is effective about it. You know, in your case with work, you know, you taking that high road, you know, and I will say, when and I'm a very good example of that, and both of you guys have know it. I mean, Alex especially knows it. When you come at me with horns, I'm gonna bang you to death because mm-hmm. you're never gonna beat me. It's just not gonna happen. Mm-hmm. Humility destroys me because these are the mm-hmm. things that pop in my mind. So when somebody tries to front me off or call me to the mat, I'm gonna go until I die. Mm-hmm. It's that, you know, that really hurt my feelings that you said this or, you know, that really bothered me. I mean, Alex knows I talked a lot of shit to Alex, messed with him a lot. I said one thing to him once and I, as soon as I said it, I saw his eyes glaze and it was like a joke. <laughs> I saw his eyes glaze. I saw like the remnants of a tear right here. <laughs> And he just kind of looked at me and that's humility. Like I knew I hurt his feelings. Like it had gone too far and it crushed me. Yeah. Now, if he had said, you're a real ass for saying that, I can't believe that I would have defended myself. You would have dug in. You know, I would have exactly. Um, so we know how effective it is yet. We're so reluctant to go there. I just find kind of ironic and it's important to talk about, especially this time of year, you know, we're coming up to Easter, we're coming up to that sacrifice, all those, I mean, all these podcasts, I mean, we want to be doing this every week, but especially at this time is really self-evaluation of, 
Lion's Den isn't just about faith. It's about life and what's working for you and what isn't. In all of our cases, faith works for us. That's why we're talking about it. That's why we're sharing with it. But it, it's not about, you know, you got to be Christian. You should become Buddhist or any of that type of stuff. It's about finding something that works for you. Are you living a life that's working for you? Are you happy? Are you, you know, satisfied? Are, are you living the life you want to live and if you're not why aren't you right you know now for us our faith has given a lot of answers to that so you know it works for us it's not so much the point of this the point of it is that self-evaluation and now is a very good time to do it i mean i'm absolutely convinced this time of year is just something in the energy there's something in the air and maybe it's just me a lot like christmas you know people get a lot nicer during christmas and you know all those type of things it's kind of similar with easter where people get you know just seems like people get a little more humble a little more aware of stuff so i think it's just a good thing to talk about yeah i agree oh, if there's anything else you guys want to add no no not at all so, I mean, we'll all try it too. Let's all please be a little more humble, a little more kinder to people, understand everybody's got their own cross to bear. Yep. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Absolutely. Thank you.